Welcome back to my channel for another Leica episode and this will be an analog episode because here in front of me on the table, still not opened, we are going to do this in the course of the video, is the new Leica M6, so the 2022 version of the Leica M6, a legendary iconic film roll camera in rangefinder style. And what I also have here is a vintage M6, so we can actually compare them and put them side by side. What I also will cover in the video is different versions of the Leica M6 and most importantly I want to talk about purpose. What is the purpose of bringing a Leica M6 back to market in a 2022 version? Let's kick off the video. Let's start by quickly unboxing the new Leica M6 and let's put the legacy M6 aside. So we have the box here, it's still sealed, not opened yet. So let's get a knife and let's try to open this here. And then we have a look inside. Here we go. Wow, <laughs> look at that. It's exactly the same design of what we had back then when Leica started to bring the M6 to market in 1984. So Leica maintains tradition here and produces the 2022 version of the M6 in exactly the same design as the 1984 version of the M6. There is absolutely no difference here. If we look from the side, Ernst Leitz, Wetzlar, Germany, that's good. Here we have some indicators. So it's a Leica M series camera, of course, it's a rangefinder camera. We have the M6, this one here, the one from 2022, only comes in the black finish at this point in time. I wouldn't be surprised if Leica comes up with a chrome version once in a while and also with limited special editions like they always do. And here on the Legacy M6, I have the black version and we have the chrome version. The chrome version is the one I have here in this box. We'll later see that. Actually, the only difference we see in these packagings is that the new version has more volume in the packaging than the legacy version. But that's really the only difference we have here. We also have on both cameras text on the box here saying that this is a rangefinder camera and you know certain informations. We have uh, through the lens exposure measurement on both cameras. I come to the specifications in the course of the video of course. And that's basically it. No more differences. If you look at the back side of the box here we have some indications which for instance concern environmental topics. But in general, a very consistent design between the 2022 Leica M6 and the 1984 Leica M6. Let's now have a look inside the box. So into the 2022 version, let's open this. Let's see what we have inside. So here is a box in the box, which I think is the manual. Yes, instructions. So let's see what we have here. Design minimalistic, like always with Leica, but beautiful and elegant, I should say. So let's get this out here. Okay. So first of all, here we have a battery. That's the battery we need for light metering, for instance. I come to light metering later in the course of the video. That's actually the screw you need to get the battery in the camera body. And then we have here a manual. Let's look inside quickly. Here we have the certificate where people sign up for the quality and uh, assurance of the quality, of course. Then we have here this usual brochure which comes with the rangefinder cameras saying the essentials. So the essentials of photography, Leica style. And then we have a complete manual where you can read in different languages how to operate this rangefinder camera with film rolls. What else do we have in the box? That's the box with the camera, of course. And again here, this is super consistent with what we have in the Legacy M6. So let me open this up here and let's get this out. And first of all, if we look here at the manual, let me quickly get this out and uh, let's have a look inside. So if you compare the manual on the left hand side here, you see actually the 2022 version and this here is the 1984 version they are pretty consistent. It's just that the format changed a bit, but of course the legacy manual, I guess, is only in German. So let's have a look here. Yeah, this is only German. And uh, you also see here, it's a very detailed manual, but if you look at the photographs, which for instance is here quite nice, you see the haircut of that guy clearly is not from 2022. So this is a vintage manual here 
in an excellent condition by the way. This one here comes in different languages. It also only is the quick start guide. So if we look into that here, it's more modern in terms of design and you have it in all these different languages. So that's the only difference. But from a design perspective, looking at it from a distance besides the format, pretty consistent what we see in 2022 compared to 1984. As a side note and a little gimmick, in the Legacy M6, you also find a sticker provided, which you can put on your car, for instance, to express your enthusiasm about Leica photography. I have now cleaned up the mess in front of me on the table, and let's have a look at these two hard cases here, or hard boxes, and they look, again, very much consistent. I think the color changed a little bit. Here is a bit darker on the lights logo than what we have on the 1984 version, but is super consistent. Also from the back, super minimalistic, and it's a very solid carrying case for these Leica M6 rangefinder cameras. Now, if we open for a moment the new version, let's do this here. Then we see inside a very beautiful design. So here you see the lights logo graved into that soft finish here. We have Leica M. We have here a shoulder strap in leather. So this is a leather shoulder strap. There is nothing else here as accessories included. And then we have here the camera in that black finish. So let's open it and let's have a look. Beautiful, very beautiful. I'll put it side by side with the 1984 version in a moment, but have a look at this beautiful camera here. Matte black finish looks really good. And of course we are loading it with film. I'm also going to shoot it, but not in this video, of course, this is just about the comparison and giving you all the data you might wanna know about this new rangefinder camera with film rolls instead of a digital sensor. If we now put the 2022 version and the 1984 version side by side, we have again, an astonishing consistency in design. This one here opens a little wider. This one here is fixed at a certain angle, but it is the same logo, of course, it is Leica M. And we have also here the shoulder strap inside. This one here is a nylon fabric, it's not leather like we had it on the new version. So this is a bit more posh here. Um, but in general, from the design perspective, exactly the same. And if I now take these cameras both out and put the boxes aside, let's quickly do that here. So here we have the boxes then we are able to compare them side by side. And I also wanna go a bit in the history of the Leica M6 and talk about specifications, different versions, and as I said in the intro of the video, about the purpose of a Leica M6 film roll camera coming to market in 2022. From a design perspective, again, astonishing similarity. Let's look into dimensions. They seem to have the same width here, if you look at that, putting them on top, looking at them from the side, exactly the same. I think in terms of elements and controls, the switch for the frame lines in the optical viewfinder is here bigger on that Chrome version here for the Legacy M6 than what we have here on the 2022 version. But in general, very consistent also in the engravings Leica M6 here and the lights logo in the middle of the camera body. We also have here exactly the same and uh, there is really no difference here. If we look at the top, we have the control wheels, so the shutter speed dial, same engravings, same specifications. We have the winder for advancing the film, exactly the same. Also the window we have here with the frame counter, exactly the same. And then here the film winder is also exactly the same. So from a dimension perspective, from a design perspective, these cameras are almost the same. And uh, I don't see differences here, which would be eye catching in one or the other way. The Leica M6 historically came in various versions, but the two I want to distinguish here are the Leica M6, which you could call the classic M6, and the Leica M6 TTL. And the M6 was produced between 1984 up to 1998, and then the M6 TTL had a four-year time window from 1998 to 2002. They both have exactly the same light metering system, so that the classic one has not the three letters TTL, doesn't mean that it's not metering light through the lens. They both meter light through the lens and that's important because if you change the aperture, more or less light will fall towards the film. And of course that should change the metering. And if the light metering is sensitive to that, then it's of course a superior way of metering light. The difference between the two is that the Leica M6 TTL has TTL flash sync, which the Leica M6 in the classic version 
doesn't have. And then there are distinguishing features between the two cameras. And uh, if you would put them side by side, one thing which is eye-catching is that the M6 TTL has a bigger shutter speed dial. And uh, the other one is that on the hot shoe engravings, on both you have on the left-hand side the serial number, but on the right-hand side you have on the M6 TTL the three letters TTL engraved. And these two things, the bigger shutter speed dial and the engraving on the hot shoe, they help you to distinguish these two cameras if you put them side by side and otherwise they look almost exactly the same. ISO range is consistent on both cameras 6 to 6.4K and shutter speed range is 1 over 1000 seconds up to 1 second plus bulb mode of course which we always have on Leica rangefinder cameras and the M6 TTL has an additional setting off on the shutter speed dial which helps you to save battery time. When Leica recently announced the revival of the Leica M6, there were two controversial discussion points in the community. One, why did Leica not provide the bigger shutter speed dial to the new 2022 version of the Leica M6? And the second one concerns viewfinder magnification. Because here we have an 0.72 times magnification on the 2022 version of the Leica M6, whereas on a lot of the Leica M6 TTLs back then you had 0.85 times and that is of course a superior magnification and quite some people in the community in the web in blogs and so on they complained why Leica brought the classic M6 and not the M6 TTL. I personally think that is not an issue for me. I'm happy with that camera. I will load it with film, go out and shoot and enjoy this iconic camera newly manufactured in 2022 in my hands. But you know, if this is holding you back because the shutter speed dial is a bit smaller or you have only, quote unquote, only an 0.72 times magnification, then why don't you go to the secondary market and grab a camera from the legacy lineup of the Leica M6 TTL. As a rule of thumb, if you want to summarize in a nutshell the Leica M6 and the Leica M6 TTL, you could start by saying that the M6 Classic essentially is a Leica M4P with through the lens light metering. And the M6 TTL then essentially in turn is an M6 Classic with TTL flash functionality. And that's basically it. Going quickly through the specifications of the new 2022 Leica M6, we have a weight of 575 gram if you don't have the battery loaded. We have, as I mentioned before, an 0.72 times viewfinder magnification for all lenses. I spoke already about shutter speed, flash swing speed, not metering through the lens for the classic M6 is 1 over 50 seconds. The working range for focusing, like typically on Leica M lenses, is 70 centimeter to infinity. And uh, I also covered already the ISO range here. Now, if we look into the metering principle, I will show that in a moment on the camera, there is light reflected by a metering spot in the center of the first shutter curtain. And that's where the metering happens. And that metering spot has a diameter of roughly 12 millimeter, and that corresponds to about 13% of the full 35 millimeter format. Power supply, you have two choices. You can go for two smaller batteries or one larger battery. Here included was the larger battery. I showed it quickly when I unboxed the Leica M6 and I'm also going to mount it in a moment to the camera body. And then in terms of material and finish, this is a super robust camera. It will not let you down. It's a closed full metal housing. We have on the top cover and bottom cover brass and black finish. As I said before, I would not exclude that they bring a chrome version later on, but that's basically what we have today, a black finish. And then the operating conditions is from zero degrees Celsius up to plus 40 degree, which is the normal range for Leica rangefinder cameras. One last point to mention on the specifications is the set of frame lines we see in the optical viewfinder, which we can also change by the frame line switch at the front side of the camera body. And these are illuminated frame lines and they highlight the image field for all in six focal lengths. And they also come in pairs. So we have one package for the 28 and 90 millimeter focal length. We have 35 and 135 millimeter and 50 and 75 millimeter. And the magic happens when you attach a lens, which uh, will then be recognized by the camera body based on the six bit optical coding on the lens and the camera body. Then the corresponding focal length automatically appears in the viewfinder as frame lines and all other frame lines can be displayed using the field selector. Since we now have heard about the history of the M6 cameras and the specifications and all of that, let's get the legacy M6 aside here. Let's close this up. I think we've compared enough and let's focus on the 2022 Leica M6 and how to operate the camera and what we see here on the camera body, how to load film. And then let's conclude with the purpose. Why do we have this camera from Leica now in 2022? Let's start by loading the battery into the camera body. And there is here, 
a compartment so we can screw this off here. And then if we look here, we get some orientation. Plus needs to face the side which goes inside the camera body. So here we need the plus. I already took the battery out of the packaging and we have here the plus. We have here the plus if you look closely so we can insert this here. And then we are good to screw this back into the camera body. So let's do this. There's a little bit of a spring mechanism. So you need to get used to it. You need to have a slight force at the beginning but then it screws on the camera body firmly and the battery is inserted. So we are ready to meet a light with the internal TTL light meter. During the unboxing, we found an additional spare part, which is this one here. This is also a battery holder and this one can replace the one I just screwed in. And it came in this little plastic bag here. Maybe you saw it. And it also has here some spare out for a coin. So if you find it inconvenient to screw this off in this way and you want to rather use a coin, then you can use this one. But this one, of course, has not the fancy finish from the camera body. I prefer this one here because it looks much better. Let's open the camera and let's have a look inside. So we have here the release button for the lens. So if I press and hold this, I can remove the body cap. And then if we look inside, we see a curtain. And if I now advance here, then you see that white sphere I talked about before. This is the area where the light metering through the lens is actually happening. And I said before is around 12 millimeters, so 1.2 centimeter. And that's what I wanted to show after we went through this theoretical excursion on the specifications of the camera. The lens I want to mount is a Noctilux lens and it's one of the new Noctilux here. It's a 50 millimeter Noctilux widest open f1.2. And that's the lens I want to mount. But before, let's have a look what happens if we release the shutter here. Very nice. Did you see it? Let's actually go here maybe on uh, bulb mode. Let me just quickly see here. And then I can press and hold the shutter button. So you see inside, that's the area behind the curtain where later the film will occur. And then it gets exposed as long as the shutter is open. And if I release the button, it closes up again. That's because I'm in bulb mode here. If I would go to a faster shutter speed, let's say go to one second, we can do this again. We cock the shutter and then we release it. Oh, listen to that sound. Did you hear that? That is beautiful how it is measuring that one second. Let's do this again. A very healthy sound. Listen to that. Beautiful, isn't it? So let's mount the lens now and uh, the M6 is a normal M mount camera. So we only have to align the red dot here. Here we go. That's the red dot. Let's align it. And then we have to screw it until it clicks. And now the camera is ready. From a lens perspective, we have mounted the battery, which means we are also ready here. And we could basically shoot if in a moment we load the film. But before, let's look into a few more elements. And First of all, here you have the shutter speed dial. And I mentioned in the specifications, we have here a bulb mode. That means as long as you press and hold the shutter button down, it will expose the film to light. That's what I just showed when we had the camera open. And I mentioned it in the specifications, the fastest shutter speed we can get here is one over 1000 seconds. Then we have here one over 500, one over 250 and so on. Here is a yellow mark with a flash and that indicates that the flash swing speed is 1 over 50 seconds. So if you go faster than that, your flash will not work in the way you want it to work. And here is the area where you can flash sync. And then we can go up to one second. And then we have here the bulb mode, which I just illustrated when I pushed and hold the release button in order to show you the curtain mechanism inside the camera body. At the rear side of the camera, we have an ISO dial and it's important to set it right because this camera can of course be operated with an external light meter, but it has this inbuilt TTL light metering. And for that, the camera needs to know what your sensitivity of film is. And I've set this here to 400 because that's the film I'm going to shoot. And you can turn this here and then you can go, as I mentioned in the specifications, here from six up to 6,400 on the ISO side. The second element besides the viewfinder here, which is probably the third element, we have here a PC sync port and you can take this cap off. Let me try to do that. And then you see the port here. And with this tiny little fellow here, you better be careful because that gets lost easily. Then we have the hot shoe here. And uh, I mentioned that the left hand side always has engraved the serial number of the camera body. And then the right hand side is empty on the M6 Classic, but on the M6 TTL has three letters engraved, namely TTL, of course. 
Here on this side we have the rewind crank so if you want to rewind the film and you can open this up and then you get a convenient handle here or lever and you have to do this in the direction of this arrow of course so clockwise here and before you do that and rewind the film you have to activate here the rewind switch so you have to go here to R for rewind and then you're good to rewind the film and when everything is back then take the film roll out and bring it into development. And then of course also on the front side I mentioned that when I put this camera side by side with the Legacy M6 we have here the switch or selector for the frame lines in the optical viewfinder depending on the lens we are shooting, wide angle, tele, what have you. That's basically it. There is not much more to know about this camera here. As I said minimalistic design, robust like a tank. Let's now load film and uh, then I will conclude the video with a few remarks on purpose. Why do we have this camera? in 2022. Loading film is pretty straightforward. First of all we have to open here the bottom and get remove the bottom plate which can be done like this and then you already get here a little instruction illustration how you have to do this. I'm going to shoot the camera with uh, 400 T Max from Kodak. It's a fantastic black and white negative film so let's open this up here and let's get the film roll outside. Here we go. And now we have here on the Leica M6 the advanced bottom plate. You don't have to fiddle around a lot with your film and you know try to push it with your fingertips forth and back. This plate will take care of the correct winding of the film. So all we have to do is we have to insert it, which I'm going to do here. We pull it out a little bit and then here it needs to fit inside. Let me just get it here inside and that's already good to go. Then we push it gently a little bit, get the bottom plate mounted again, which I'm going to do right now. That was the box for the film roll, uh, which was falling down, this one here. So don't worry, nothing bad happened here. And then let's screw it on. So it sits firmly and that's it. And now all we have to do is we have to advance here until we come to the first frame. Currently we are here at zero, if you see that. And one more is the right position and now we are good to show. That's the first shot. Now I could shoot this of course and waste the film but I'd rather shoot it outside and uh, then we have to use later as I said before the rewind switch here and then we can use the rewind lever here to wind the film back and take it out of the camera and bring it into processing and development. That's basically all. Well I think I will waste a few shots for you guys to illustrate something which I find important to mention and if you are not sure if your film is advancing correctly there is one clear indication that the film is transported in the right way and that is if I advance here and cock the shutter and advance the film the rewind lever here will move with advancing. Have a look. You see that? Let's take the shot. Do it again. You see how it's moving? It's probably even better visible if I open this here so you see it really moving. Quite nice and yes I'm wasting my film for that video. A second point I wanted to make is that the camera is only metering light if you advance the lever and cock the shutter of the camera so that the white sphere here in the middle I talked about before becomes visible because that's where the light metering is happening and if you don't advance and don't cock the camera, the shutter I should say, then light metering will not occur. So if you half press the shutter button without having cocked the shutter, nothing will happen. Last but not least, let's now talk about purpose. What is the purpose of bringing a remake of a 1984 film roll camera to market in 2022 when every photographer is obsessed by megapixel and uh, by the digital workflow? And uh, I mentioned when we spoke about the specs that some people in the web complain about uh, the shutter speed dial not being large enough like we have it on the M6 TTL and so on. I think this is all not important. And uh, the question is who is this camera made for? And here I think and that's why it comes at the end because I think it's very important to understand Leica has done something brilliant. They want to bring back the love for film roll shooting. And in the last, let's say, maybe 10 years, we've seen a revival anyway of film shooting, also in the younger generation. Very often they also go for 120 film in medium format like a Mamiya 7 Mark II or a Mamiya RC67, you know, or Hasselblad 500 series cameras, what have you, but also 35 millimeter film. And Leica's purpose, Leica's intention, I should say, to give this camera a purpose is to bring it back an iconic camera 
in 2022 to inspire people for film photography. That's why, and I say it with all due respect, find it completely pointless that some very well-known influencers in the web say there is no need to look into this camera. Because, you know, the shutter speed dial should be bigger, we should have more the M6 TTL here and not the M6 Classic. So stick to your old gear and uh, still use what you purchased between 1984 and 2002. But that's exactly not the point what the purpose of this camera is. Because the audience for this camera are younger generation photographers who don't own an M6. They don't own an M6 TTL. What Leica is offering them and inspiring them to is an entry ticket into film photography. And that's what this camera is all about. And I think here they did a nice job because this is a camera which can be easily used. It's super robust. It has a huge range of lenses you can use on it from the very expensive to the not so expensive. It is easy to operate. Even the film loading, as I showed before, is one of the easiest mechanisms you can have. And I think it will inspire people to shoot film and then on top of it, very likely, add a digital workflow by scanning these images or negatives and then you can still work with them on the computer. But manual photography, like you have it in rangefinders and then on top of it, film photography, something very special because it comes to the essence of photography. It slows you down. Every shot counts. You don't have here the option like in digital photography to take as many images as you want. Once in a while the film will be coming to an end and you have to insert a new film and it's also not coming for free. You have to pay for this film roll so you start to think more carefully about what image do I really want to take, what image composition is reflecting the expression I want to have in that image and that's what this camera is about, that's what film photography is all about and the Leica M6 in 2022 is for those people who have not yet tasted film photography. It's not for those veterans who have an M6 TTL somewhere in a suitcase in the rumpus room. Anyway, I think I come to an end. This was a bit philosophical, I know, but I hope you liked that video. If you liked it, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel. There's always more to come. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and healthy. And of course, peace out.